Elizabeth with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio, and I am here to teach you in a series of videos how to use acupressure at home. You will learn simple methods to address common conditions like headaches, sinus congestion, shoulder pain, indigestion, and more. These acupressure videos are intended to be supplemental care, not as a replacement for medical treatment. But by using the tools I'm sharing with you, I hope you will feel more empowered to take charge of your health. Acupressure, like acupuncture, involves stimulating points on our bodies to help us feel better. I started making these videos in weekly installments at the start of stay-at-home emergency orders. Manchester Acupuncture Studio, like other businesses, had to close temporarily as a precautionary measure to slow the spread of COVID-19. You might notice I'm wearing my pajamas, like many other people who are working from home. As a community acupuncturist, I take a casual approach to working with patients. If you would like to learn more about acupuncture, please go to our website, manchesteracupuncturestudio.org to find a free online version of our ebook, Why Did You Put That Needle There? written by Executive Director Andy Wegman. If you're joining me from Channel 23, Manchester Community Television, you can find all of these videos on Manchester Acupuncture Studios YouTube channel. I did this work in collaboration with my husband, Eric. He's the man behind the camera. Hello. And with my colleague, Andy Wegman, and several patients of the Manchester Acupuncture Studio who requested topics covered by these videos. I'd also like to extend thanks to my friend, John Hopwood, for putting these videos on local television. So please stick around and follow along at home. Hi everybody, I'm Elizabeth with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio and today I'm going to talk to you about acupressure points for pain and for headaches. So there's different kinds of headaches and there's different kinds of pain. So we're going to talk about two points that are good for frontal headaches but also good for any kind of generalized pain anywhere in the body. The first point is large intestine 4. This is located on the web of your hand between your thumb and index finger. And this point does a lot of different things, but frontal headaches are at the very top of the list. The large intestine channel starts on the index finger, it runs up the arm, and it ends on the face. So large intestine points, especially LI4, are good for frontal headache, sinus headache, sinus congestion, toothache, jaw pain, nosebleeds, anything having to do with the face, think LI4. But also, if you have any kind of discomfort anywhere in your body for any reason and you can't think of what to do, just go to LI4, press and rub 10 to 30 times, and that can really go a long way. Our second point is liver three. And liver three is located on the web of your foot between your big toe and your second toe. And the liver channel runs from the big toe, up the inside of the leg, up the torso and chest, and then from there, a divergent pathway continues on from the chest, the neck and throat, the face, and ends at the top of the head. So that makes liver three an ideal point for frontal headaches and also pain on the top of the head known as a vertex headache. So whenever you use large intestine four and liver three together, it becomes a point combination known as the four gates. And this is commonly used for any kind of pain in the body, whether it be more internal, like a digestive discomfort and pain, or a muscular skeletal, musculoskeletal pain. And that's it. Um, give this a shot, see what you think. And again, we miss all of you. We hope to see you again and in good health. with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio and spring is here so we're gonna talk about points for seasonal allergies we will be touching our face so be sure to wash your hands for 20 seconds before and after doing this acu acupressure exercise so let's get started our first point is bladder 2 on the innermost part of our eyebrows you can just press and rub in circles and as your sinuses start to open, you can also pinch the same point with your thumb and index finger. 
And then you can kind of work your way along your eyebrows, just pinching and massaging your eyebrows. This will help ease some tension in your forehead. Great, our next point is stomach three. It's up along the cheekbone, directly below the center of the eye. And you'll just sink right on in there and you can just press and rub the point. And as your sinuses start to open, you can massage along your cheekbone, moving outward towards your ear. And this will help not only open your sinuses, it'll help ease some tension in your face and your jaw. Great, and our last point is on either side of the nose, large intestine 20, just press and rub. And yeah, my sinuses are opening. This is good stuff. So give this a try. These points are great for seasonal allergies. They're also good for facial paralysis. So thanks for joining us today. We do miss all of you and we hope to see you again and in good health. with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio and today I'm following up on a special request to teach acupressure points that are good for shoulder and neck pain which is great because I've got that right now um, I'm gonna show you two points on the side of the hand the pinky side of the hand small intestine 3 and small intestine 4 and just for a little bit of background the small intestine channel starts on the outside of the pinky it runs up the side of the arm up the back of the arm and it zigzags across the shoulder. So the um, so points on the small intestine channel are ideal for pain on the shoulder blade. They're also good for pain on the nape of the neck and for any generalized back pain, low back pain. So I'm gonna find small intestine three. It's on the, it's right next to the knuckle of your pinky, the fifth metacarpal. I'm gonna press and rub this point and Interchangeably, I'm gonna use small intestine four, so I'm gonna slide up the side of my hand, and before I get to the wrist, I'm gonna fall into a little divot and press and rub small intestine four. And I'm gonna do this interchangeably while I kick things up a notch. I wanna activate points on my shoulder blade. So I am leaning against a foam roller. You can also do this with a tennis ball against a wall or on the floor. If you lean against the wall, then it's easier to multitask and massage mas small intestine three and four while massaging the shoulder directly with the foam roller. There are six or seven small intestine channel points on the shoulder blade. All of them, when they're activated, are good for treating shoulder blade pain, and they're also good for pain in the upper arm and pain in the elbow. And yeah, that's the spot right there. I'm just gonna lean right here. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. We miss all of you. We hope to see you again soon and in good health. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio. Are you ready to learn a magic trick to relieve leg cramps? This point is so easy that it's under your nose, literally. The point is under your nose. The next time you wake up in the middle of the night with a Charlie horse or you exercise just a little too much, remember governing vessel 26 or the divot between your nose and your upper lip. You're just gonna press and rub this point and take deep breaths until the muscle cramp or the leg spasm goes away. And that's it. It should take about 30 seconds to a minute. I've been practicing this and teaching this tip to patients for years. I learned about it from my friend Christine Kaveri Weber, a shiatsu practitioner and yoga teacher. And thanks for joining me. Again, this is Elizabeth from the Manchester Acupuncture Studio reporting from home. We miss all of you and we hope to see you again and in good health. Elizabeth with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio and today we're going to talk about acupressure points for earaches and ear pain. I'm following up on a request from a patient who was experiencing a headache behind the ear and these points will work as well. So for this sequence we're going to be using points on our hand, our wrist, and then our opposite foot. 
So let's just say that I've got an earache on my left side. I'm gonna stimulate points on my left side, my left wrist, and then I'm gonna go to the right foot and stimulate points there. Today we're using points on the gallbladder and Sanjiao channels because they both meet and have points around the ears. So first we're gonna start with Sanjiao 2 and Sanjiao 3. So both of these points are right by the knuckles. We're in the space between the knuckles of the pinky and the ring finger. And we're gonna massage and press these points maybe 20 to 30 times. Take your time, spend some time here. Both of these points are especially good for ear disorders, but Sanjiao 3 is the most important point for ear disorders. After that, we're gonna to go to the find the top of the wrist and measure two finger widths up and locate the space in between the heads of the two bones of the lower arm. And this is Sanjiao 5. Sanjiao 5 is also good for ear disorders, but it's especially good for headaches that are on the side of the head. So just press and rub in circles and give it a little while to help ease up the headache or the ear pain. And the last thing we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the opposite foot and we're gonna find the space in between the bones of the pinky toe and the next toe over. These are three gallbladder points, gallbladder 41, gallbladder 42, and then gallbladder 43. And we're gonna massage these points. You can use your finger rubbing back and forth like I am, or you can get in there with your thumbs and really dig in. All of these points are good for disorders of the eyes and the ears, but they're especially good for a one-sided headache. And that's it. I hope this is helpful. Thank you again for joining me. We hope to see you again soon and in good health. Elizabeth with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio and today we're going to talk about acupressure points for digestive discomfort. We're going to talk about two points, pericardium 6 on the wrist and spleen 4 on the instep of the foot. These points are commonly used together to treat any kind of digestive discomfort. So let's get started. To locate pericardium 6 you're going to find the crease of your wrist, measure two finger widths up, and then press the center of your wrist in between the two tendons. And you can do this on both wrists, maybe 20 to 30 times, or until you start to feel some symptom relief. If you've ever used motion sickness bracelets, that's exactly what those bracelets are intended to do, apply pressure to pericardium six. Next, we're gonna locate spleen four on the instep of the foot. So the easiest way to find spleen four is to put your finger on the top of the knuckle of your big toe on the inside of your foot, and then trace the shaft of the bone until you reach the next bump on your foot. And that is where you'll find spleen four. So press and rub spleen four on both feet, alternating back and forth between pericardium six, and do this as often as you need to, to get symptom relief for any kind of mild digestive discomfort, like nausea, hiccups, bloating, or even some more severe issues like abdominal pain, morning sickness, and vomiting. These points are also commonly used for relieving anxiety and calming the mind, especially if your anxiety goes straight to your gut. And that's it. I hope this is helpful. We miss all of you, and we hope to see you again soon and in good health. acupuncture studio and this is Sophia and today we're going to talk about points that can relieve constipation. This is a request from a patient and a common reason why people seek out acupuncture. We're going to be using three groups of points on the back of the wrist, near the elbow, and then below the knee on the lower leg. So let's get started. So first we're going to find the back of the wrist and then we're going to measure two finger widths up from the back of the wrist in the center and then a third finger width just above that. This is Sanjiao 6 and Sanjiao 5. Sanjiao 6 is the most important point to treat constipation. And used with Sanjiao 5, both of these points together can help relieve stagnation in the large intestine. So you're gonna press and rub and massage points on both the left and the right wrist. Give it a few minutes for each side before we move on to the next group of points. The next group is near the elbow and just below. 
So locate your elbow and then sink your thumb into the fleshy area in the crease when you bend your arm. This is large intestine 11. You're gonna massage large intestine 11 and then massage down the channel about what would be the width of your palm and then back up again. You can do this several times. You're hitting large intestine 11, large intestine 10, large intestine nine, and large intestine eight. All of these points are good for distension in the stomach and abdominal pain. And finally, we're gonna find the mirror image of this area on the lower leg just below the knee. So measure about the width of your hand from the bottom of your kneecap in between the two bones of your lower leg. We're starting with stomach 36. And we're gonna massage stomach 36 along the bone till we get to what would be about the middle of the lower leg and then back up again. Here we're massaging stomach 36, stomach 37, stomach 38, stomach 39. And then we're, when, we're about, when we're about midway of the lower leg, we're just gonna move our thumb over to the other side of the lateral shin bone, the fibula, and massage stomach 40. Stomach 40 is a really important point for addressing and treating any kind of phlegm or mucus condition. Acupuncture students will commonly refer to this point as phlegm 40. And we talk about phlegm, we're not just talking about phlegm in the stomach and the digestion, but also any kind of phlegm that can be in the chest and chest congestion. And then we're just gonna massage back up the stomach channel and do this, you know, both sides, left and right leg. And the points on the stomach channel on the lower leg and the points on the large intestine channel around and near the elbow are good also for any type of mental agitation and mania. So try these points the next time you're feeling agitated or a little bit restless. Right now we're facing some really uncertain times and we need to be calm and focused and present, whether we're working under new pressures and restrictions or we're waiting to go back to work at all. We just wanna be able to, again, stay calm and focused and able to digest the challenges that are ahead of us. And that's it. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see all of you again soon and in good health. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio. And I'm gonna teach you a simple acupressure technique to treat menstrual cramps and the low back pain associated with it. I learned this when I was an acupuncture student and I've been practicing this on myself ever since. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is roll up your pajama pants and you're gonna locate spleen eight and spleen nine on the inside of your calf along the head of the shin bone or the tibia. So spleen eight about here, spleen nine, about here, basically just find the tender spots. This, these areas tend to be sore on most people, so if you just find the areas that are a little bit more sore to the touch, those are the areas that you're gonna wanna focus on. So once you find the points, go ahead and gently massage, or you can just follow, follow the shaft of the bone and just keep rubbing the areas. Take some nice deep breaths. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and do the same treatment on the other side. And that's it. I hope this has been helpful. Again, I'm Elizabeth with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio. Reporting from home, we miss seeing all of you and we hope to see you again soon and in good health. This is Elizabeth from the Manchester Acupuncture Studio, and I'm going to talk to you today about how you can use a hair dryer to give yourself a nice, warm, uh, therapeutic acupressure technique at home. We learned this from our friend Robert Hayden from Presence Community Acupuncture in Hollywood, Florida. So you're going to need two things. You're going to need a hair dryer, and then you're going to need a piece of cardboard with a hole punched in the middle. But just as a disclaimer, this is not for anyone who has neuropathy, 
vascular issues or any circulatory problems. Um, so let's get started. Um, just to give you a brief background of what we're simulating, this is uh, simulating the effects of moxibustion. Um, we don't use moxibustion in the group community clinic, but we do send patients home periodically with moxa sticks. They're like herbal cigars. You light them and hold them above particular acupuncture, acupressure points or areas of the body to warm the area and to, um, to provide some nourishment um, and some tonification. So if you're feeling weak right now, need a chi boost, tired, chills and fever, maybe a headache, or maybe you just wanna keep yourself well during these times, then go ahead and roll up your pajama pant legs and I'll show you how to get started. And so this is me, I'm in my pajama pants because I really haven't left the house much today. Um, so I'm gonna find stomach 36, a commonly used acupuncture point we use in the clinic all the time by finding the bottom of my kneecap and I'm gonna measure about a hand width down um, and locate it between my tibia and my fibula. So again, about a hand width down. And I'll, I usually find it because my finger just naturally dips into the area. I'm gonna put my piece of cardboard over the point and then I'm gonna use the hairdryer to warm the area until I feel a little zap and then I'm gonna back off. And I'm gonna give it about a good 20, 30 seconds before I reapply two more times. And I'm gonna back off and give it one more go. And then I can repeat on the other side. But while I'm here, I'm gonna kick in a bonus point. I really like stomach 40, which is located in the middle of the lower leg. I can't really tell if I'm exactly there, but I feel I think I'm there, but it's hard for me to measure on myself. But I really like stomach 40. It's good for phlegmy coughs, phlegm congestion, phlegm in the chest. Also a nice point for anxiety. I find it really relaxing, so I'm also gonna target that area too. And I'm gonna back off and give it another go. And one more time. And that is the treatment. And I can go ahead and I can do this on the other leg. So give this a shot. If you can, see what you think, let us know. I also included in the article a link to a really interesting story from China. There are doctors in hospitals in the Wuhan province using acupuncture, moxibustion, and Chinese herbs to treat patients who are, have been diagnosed with COVID-19 as well as their families. So it's really great to see traditional therapies well integrated into Western therapies during this pandemic. Um, I hope you are safe and well in your homes. I hope to see you again soon and in good health, and I hope we can all get through this together, but from a distance. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth with the Manchester Acupuncture Studio, and I'm gonna teach you a simple recipe, kudzu and cinnamon tea. This is something that I learned when I was in acupuncture school from my teacher, Dr. Lillian Pappen. So kudzu starch is good for reducing a fever. It balances blood sugar, it eases neck and shoulder tension and headaches, and studies show that it can reduce cravings for alcohol consumption. Uh, we've got cinnamon because cinnamon prevents the onset of a cold, it reduces phlegm in the chest, it balances blood sugar, and it's really great for arthritic pain, especially pain that gets worse in cold, damp weather. So what we're gonna need for this recipe is a tablespoon of the kudzu powder, starch dissolved in water, and we're gonna need a few dashes of cinnamon powder, and we're gonna add that to a cup of apple juice. So I've had this apple juice warming on the stove. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple dashes, and I'm gonna give this Kudzu starch a really good stir. You don't wanna add it straight to the warm apple juice because it'll turn into a ball of dough if you just add it straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in. 
and I'm gonna keep stirring it because we want the juice to thicken and not get clumpy. And because kudzu is a starch, it's great to use for sauces, gravies, anywhere that you would replace cornstarch. And it's a good, that's a good way to get more therapeutic benefit from your recipes. And once the tea or the remedy is warm enough, we can go ahead and pour it into our mug. And we can enjoy. And Dr. Lillian would always end her classes and her seminars quoting Hippocrates, let food be thy medicine, let medicine be thy food. Thanks for joining me for a special COVID-19 blog edition. We miss all of you and we hope to see you again and in good health. Thanks again for joining me. If you're watching this on Manchester Community Television Channel 23, you can find all these videos on Manchester Acupuncture Studios YouTube channel and on our blog at manchesteracupuncturestudio.org. My husband Eric and I made all these videos right here in our home in Manchester. A more extensive collection of acupressure videos made by acupuncturists all over the US and Canada is available on Vimeo through the People's Organization of Community Acupuncture. You can find it at vimeo.com slash Be safe. We hope to see you again soon and in good health. Thank you.